This is Amy Jenner. Thanks for your company. With me now from Adelaide, Liberal front bencher, the Assistant Education Minister Simon Birmingham, and from Brisbane, Labor's Graham Perrett. Gentlemen, good morning to you, uh, Senator good Birmingham. Morning, guys. To you, first of all, the, the Treasurer and the Prime Minister have said for some time that the states, if there's going to be any argument on the GST, that the states need to lead the argument. Well, now you've got Mike Baird doing just that. Is it time for? for uh, Joe Hockey and Tony Abbott to get off the fence and say, look, we support what Baird is suggesting here to put the uh, revenue and the, the tax revenue on a sus uh, sustainable basis. Well, Kieran, look, I think it's welcome that we're seeing state premiers engaging in this discussion and that they are clearly coming to the table this week for discussions around the future of the Federation in an incredibly constructive manner. And uh, that's what I would encourage all of the state leaders to do. Uh, and I do hope they all come to that table to talk about how the Federation operates, how we can remove uh, any duplication in the Federation, how we can make sure that the responsibilities of the states and the Commonwealth are as clear cut as possible. Uh, ensuring accountabilities are as strong as possible and that all of the future cost pressures are financed and uh, ultimately the GST is a state tax it is a matter for the states and territories but this week I'm sure we will have hopefully a proper and holistic conversation uh, between the Commonwealth and all of the states about all of those different issues that frustrate people about the way our Federation works sometimes uh, the <coughs> buck passing the confusion about where responsibility lies and at the end of that, I hope we can take a step forward and give some clarity about uh, where those responsibilities should sit in the future. Graham Perrett, do you think that the electorate might be tired of scare campaigns on this issue? And particularly if there is an appropriate set of compensation to go to, to lower income earners, as Mike Baird suggested this, this morning in The Australian, that it should uh, those with incomes of less than 100000 should receive compensation as part of any change to the GST and he doesn't want the base broadened he's just talking about increasing the rate from 10 to 15 percent. Well I agree with Simon that anything that will uh, improve federation uh, should be looked at that's what sensible governments do be it commonwealth or state. Uh, obviously the Prime Minister said 33 times before the election that there would be no changes to the GST and I'm sure he's a an honourable man who keeps his word, so that would seem to uh, put those discussions, uh, make them a little bit complicated, a little bit fraught. And then you have that, that horrible situation where uh, Simon and his team uh, promised in the 2014 budget to rip $80 billion from the states. You can't you know, hold a gun to someone's head, the, the state premiers, and say, oh, let's have a conversation. That's not a conversation. Uh, that's like having a conversation with a blackmailer. You know, th this is not the sensible approach, but let's see what comes out of the, the meeting next week. But uh, I'm sure the Prime Minister will keep his word. He did say it 33 times. I'm uh, looking forward to him keeping his word. Now, I mentioned in the introduction to the program, Senator Birmingham, that there's been criticism from some in the business community, some economists who are saying that there's just not an, a, a significant or sufficient reform agenda for the government heading into the, the, your, what you hope is a second term. Should this form the basis for that? Well, Kieran, we've always said that the discussions around the Federation White Paper and the Tax Reform White Paper would form the basis for a second, second term agenda, that we would take policies out of those discussions to the next election. And that's always been and it could very be a clear. GST and I think shift. this is a government. And I, I think this government has a, a very strong reform agenda on which to stand, a significant achievements in signing multiple free trade agreements, in getting the budget uh, back in shape. It's by no means perfect yet, but we are on the right trajectory towards re-establishing surpluses in the future uh, and absolutely tackling many of the difficult areas of waste. But we also took to the last election commitments to review the Federation, so these discussions about how it works effectively are an initiative initiative of Tony Abbott's uh, to review the tax system. That's an initiative of Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey's and we're doing this work in a comprehensive manner so that we make sound and sensible okay. policy decisions rather than la the Labor Party who seem to just want to latch on to saying let's bring back the carbon tax. Graham Perrett, do you, do you respect the fact that, that Mike Baird's had the political guts to at least put forward this difficult reform as he did with the, the privatisation of polls and wires and, and won an election on it? Well, uh, look, uh, 
reform is hard. You need a leader who's prepared to go out there and talk about these things. So you think of all the big reforms of the last 30, 40 years, and you've had courageous prime ministers, uh, courageous uh, premiers. Uh, obviously, Mike Baird's three and a half years away from election. Uh, Tony, uh, Tony Abbott's looking down the barrel of a, an election coming close. So he hasn't, you know, he hasn't shown a lot of uh, courage when it comes to leading national conversations. He's out there saying the age of, in he got a treasurer saying the age of entitlement is over, and and the parliamentary speaker swanning around in helicopters. So they and they're smoking cigars at the same time as attacking pensioners. Like they they've got mixed messages. I'm yet to see any 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 courage on the part of the prime minister, and uh, I'll be very very surprised if any comes out of the in the in the next week or so. Senator Birmingham, yeah, you can respond to that, but also I guess that comparison where you've got. Uh, an attempt to try and have a sensible policy debate and yet Graham Perrett quite easily <laughs> segues to this other uh, ongoing debacle for the government and that is the distraction of the, the, the Speaker's entitlements. Well, people can choose to be distracted if they want and the Labor Party always loved being distracted. Uh, uh, as a government uh, we will focus on the real issues facing the country. Uh, we've got a good track record. Uh, we've grown 120,000 new jobs this year, uh, some 290,000 since we were elected. Uh, today we'll celebrate the fact that working with Mike Baird we have the West Connects project in New South Wales that is 18 months ahead of schedule and will deliver a 20 billion dollar economic lift to the New South Wales economy. So we're a government with a big agenda and we're getting on with that undistracted by any of these other side issues and we will now have a proper conversation with the states and territories about how health and education responsibilities sit between the states and the Commonwealth, how all of these matters will be funded in the future with different cost pressures and we want to have those constructive conversations and Mike Baird is to be applauded for putting his views on the table but I'm sure he's also somebody who will bring a constructive cons and conciliatory approach to those discussions and do you think we'll that'll give do you think that'll give the prime leaders? minister and treasurer encouragement though do you think that'll give them a bit of a boost on this because uh, they've seemed uh, you know reticent on it to say the least well, I think the Prime Minister wants to see consensus among the state and territory leaders around how it's we not going to happen, the Federation, though, how we deal with tax issues. Uh, let's try to be optimistic about this. We've seen different leaders show, different state leaders show some, uh, some leadership on this matter coming into the Federation discussions. Mike Baird has, uh, to his credit. Uh, Daniel I've Andrews seen Jay has. Weatherall t I've seen Jay Weatherall dampen down some of the scare tactics that Federal Labor have run about aspects of the Federation white paper discussions. Discussion, uh, and Jay Weatherill has actually encouraged mature debate. So let's have those mature discussions and see uh, what the end product is rather than try to preempt right, uh, the conclusion. Let's, I want to play you a bit of what Bronwyn Bishop said at the weekend when asked about the Treasurer's comments that her use of the chopper didn't pass the sniff test. Here she was at a news conference on Saturday. If you didn't see it, let's have a look. Jay says some funny things sometimes, doesn't he? I think he said. Uh, Poor people don't drive cars or something, so it's, it's uh, sometimes we have cause for this. Simon Birmingham, uh, your thoughts on that? Bronwyn Bishop, under a bit of pressure, has a whack at the Treasurer on the way through and trying to defend her use of the, uh, the chopper. Oh, maybe that was a funny thing to say too. OK, so can she survive as Speaker? Uh, look, Kieran, uh, uh, Bronwyn has acknowledged that there was an error of judgment and she's repaid the money, she's paid the penalty on top of that. Uh, this is the government that brought sorry. in that penalty regime. Uh, we brought in that penalty regime so the rules are stricter and clearer uh, than they were previously uh, and I think it really is a case that we should be focusing on the big issues. Okay, uh, Graeme Perrett, your take on, on that? Uh, is this something Karen, that, will, um, that will blow Karen. over for the Speaker and the Government? Kieran, on the, uh, the day that the, ex the Prime Minister, the head of the executive and the leader of the parliament, Christopher Pine, dragged Bronwyn Bishop, not very reluctantly, to the speaker's chair, I made a speech. You can, you can see it on my web page. Uh, I made a speech about what I thought Bronwyn Bishop would be like as a speaker and um, she's lived down to all my expectations. Uh, obviously, anyone who thinks that it's acceptable to, fly, uh, to get a helicopter to fly, 80, to go travel 80 kilometres, uh, or to go to a fundraiser, 
uh, and, and mention democracy. What, what is that? The, is that the rule now? If I go to a, a Labor Party fundraiser but mention democracy, I'm somehow able to have the taxpayer uh, fund that. I mean, come on, this this doesn't pass any test. I was at the, the footy on the weekend on, on Saturday morning. I heard three different conversations going on with people that didn't know I was nearby talking about this. This doesn't pass the sniff test. It doesn't pass the pub test. It doesn't pass any Australian attitude towards what the, the fair go might be. So to, for, at the, you know, it's more important that we, that we do focus on the economy and the challenges that are coming our way. Uh, Simon is misrepresenting the challenges facing this economy, but we need to have a government that's fair dinkum about it. The Prime Minister personally dragged Bronwyn Bishop to that Speaker's chair. She is his creature. He Now, I know no one's going to put Bronwyn in the corner and we, he doesn't want to have a by-election because she's not going to sit on the back bench, but surely the Prime Minister should find a backbone and show a little bit of leadership. Senator Birmingham, the, the Prime Minister must be uh, incredibly frustrated that this story dropped just hours after uh, he was on the front foot over the carbon tax issue. Now distractions, not just for the next 24 hours, but for days after, with more stories emerging, the fact that she's taken uh, reportedly another charter flight to Young, to a fundraiser. Um, he, he must be incredibly frustrated. Do you think that it's appropriate for ministers to attend party fundraisers through the taxpayer dime? Kieran, uh, one thing that I've learnt in my time in politics, and I'm sure the Prime Minister's learnt in his much longer time in politics, is not to get frustrated by what you read in the newspapers or hear on the radio or see on the television screens, but to get on with the job that you have to do. And that's what the Prime Minister's doing. Uh, he's getting on with the job of creating more jobs, of strengthening our economy, of dealing with issues of national security, of trying to work cooperatively with state and territory leaders around the structure of the Federation. They're the big issues that he is getting on with and the rest of the government is getting on with and uh, we won't be distracted but nor should ministers, will be frustrated. But should ministers claim it uh, in terms of going to fundraisers? The, the Treasurer didn't deny that he'd done it before. I'm just wondering whether or not this is fair game, whether ministers are entitled to do this. Kieran, uh, people travel uh, the country for all sorts of official events and yes that couples in and links in uh, with a range of other events that people have done over the years in terms of uh, party events that are held in concurrence with official duties. That's happened across uh, all manner of parties. Uh, every single political party uh, has seen that level of uh, dual engagement over the years. Uh, that's all legitimate within entitlements. Uh, in the matter of Bronwyn Bishop, she's acknowledged that there was an error of judgment in the way some of these issues were administered in her office, but let's really focus on the big issues at hand instead. Do you accept, Graham Perrett, that it is within the rules? And I, I guess the other question is that, you know, from a Labor perspective, glass houses, um, should you be careful as a, a Labor Party that, uh, that everyone's books are in order, everyone's expenses have been, uh, have been uh, consistent with your attack on Bronwyn Bishop? Well, I'm looking forward to everyone in the Labor Party who took a helicopter flight uh, to a fundraiser calling me to state their case. Um, obviously, you know, a speaker has certain obligations. You know, she, she's put in that role to be independent. Uh, obviously, Tony Abbott and Christopher Pine decided to buck tradition and signs and symbolism of parliamentary uh, that have evolved over the last 800 years and had the executive drag the speaker to the chair. That was their deliberate decision, the message they wanted to give to the Australian public. So I, I think the reality is this is a problem for the Liberal Party uh, and the, the National Party that are attached to them. Uh, they need to make a decision on what best serves Australian democracy. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that the Speaker, I have to be respectful of the Speaker at all times in all, all places, not just in Parliament House, Kieran, um, when Parliament's sitting. So I, you know, I have to be careful. But there is a, a parliamentary process and obviously the Speaker enjoys that position because of, she has the confidence of the Prime Minister. That's what he said yesterday, uh, that's what he's made clear, but I think the Australian people have a completely different view. And I think that they would prefer the Prime Minister look at some of those challenges as the revenue collapses come, as some of the challenges associated uh, with, with trade, with uh, cattle not going into Indonesia now. Oh. 
and, and unemployment on the rise, business confidence at an all, uh, uh, really in some difficult territory. We need to get this economy okay. ticking along, not focusing on these distractions. Graham so that, Perry, that's, Simon that's, Birmingham. That, that's welcome, uh, Graham. I hope that's what Bill Shorten does today. Not focus on distractions. <laughs> Gents, have a good day. Thanks for your time. A quick break on AIM Agenda. Uh,